how fast is Mojo compared to Python? Well, the answer is it depends. Uh, what problem are you trying to solve? Well, it turns out for specific problems such as generating the Mandelbrot set, which is a very compute bound problem that can be easily parallelized, the answer is that it can be over 35,000 times faster than Python or more. Well, this is a topic of a recent blog post that we published on modular.com slash blog. So in this blog post, my colleague Abdul talks about how Mojo gets over 35,000 speed up um, over Python. And this is part one of a series where we'll walk through and iteratively add, show you how to add optimizations to your Python code and bring it to Mojo and get substantial speed ups. Let's talk about what the Mandelbrot set is. Uh, you might have seen some pretty images on the internet that look like these or visualization like these. Uh, these are not artist renditions. These are actually visualizations that's generated from very, fairly simplistic uh, mathematical equation that looks like this. So z n plus one equal to z n squared plus c. So as you can see, this is an iterative algorithm where the next value of z is previous value squared plus c. So what is z? Uh, in this case, z is a complex number or a point in the complex plane where you know the x-axis is the real axis and y-axis is the imaginary axis and a complex number is denoted as a coordinate, which is x times i, y. And z is a complex number. Uh, and if you take a point in this complex plane and you iterate it using this equation, turns out one of two things happen the value of z diverges and goes to infinity, uh, in which case it does not belong to the Mandelbrot set, or the value of uh, z converges into the Mandelbrot set. And the result of operating uh, uh, every complex number on a complex plane uh, using this iterative algorithm is that uh, you get visualizations such as these. So we'll not go into the mathematics of Mandelbrot set, but uh, this is a very compute bound problem because every pixel can be calculated uh, pretty independently. So it's easily parallelizable and uh, it's, a, it's a compute bound problem. Now it turns out this equation is very easily implemented in Python. And this small piece of code here is Python code that shows you how to do it. So in this loop, uh, we calculate this iterative um, equation, which is z equal to z squared plus c, the next value of z. And we have a criteria to determine if the value of z is diverging to infinity. Of course, we won't wait till it goes to infinity. We set up a criteria here, which is if it exceeds through the absolute value of z or the modulus of z or the norm of z, whichever you like to use, if it exceeds the value of two, we break. We, it is called an escape time algorithm. We break from it. We, we conclude that it's going to diverge and it's not going to be part of the set. And uh, the second escape criteria is maximum number of iterations. Uh, we determine that uh, up to 1,000 iterations, we are going to check if it diverges. Uh, if not, we just uh, stop there. And the outer loops, outer nested loops, basically goes through all the pixels in the complex plane. So the uh, i and j, go through the height and the width of the complex plane to determine uh, or to compute the uh, this equation on every single pixel. So fairly straightforward algorithm. Now, this equation uh, or this problem implementation Python is pretty slow, so I'm not gonna run it. Uh, but if you do run it and wait, it turns out that it takes this many milliseconds to run. This is about um, 1081 seconds which turns out to be about 18 minutes of computation time. And I don't want this video to be uh, that long. So I'm not going to run this in front of you, but you can replicate this later on. And after you run that, you can visualize it and you get this beautiful looking Mandelbrot set visualization. Now, uh, before we jump into Mojo and show you how, how to speed this up, you can speed it up a little bit with NumPy. Um, as you know, NumPy has uh, fast uh, implementation of uh, vectorized uh, operations where you can operate on multidimensional arrays like ND arrays, and it simplifies the math, um, how you write it. As you can see here, you can operate on entire matrices uh, with indexing instead of operating on pixels. And uh, the underlying computation is actually done in uh, C and C++, which gives it some performance boost. So 
this piece of code, um, this basically this for loop here goes through, you don't see nested loops here for each pixel because we're doing vectorized math here. And this takes about um, 184 seconds, which roughly is about three minutes. So you go from 18 minutes to three minutes uh, with NumPy, uh, which is pretty good performance improvement. That's about six times uh, speed up, right? Pretty good performance improvement and you can visualize the results, which is still the manual project. Okay, and now for the big reveal that you've all been waiting for, which is how do you speed it up with Mojo? Okay, so let's head over to the Mojo implementation here. At first glance, you'll notice that the Mojo code is not all that different looking from your Python code. You still have modules that you import from math, time, complex for complex numbers. But there are a few key differences and I'll talk about those as I walk through the Mandelbrot implementation. So um, I import a couple of other modules. I define a matrix data structure, which I won't go into because we want to work with uh, two dimensional arrays. And uh, this definition here, Mandelbrot Python to Mojo, I named it such because this is just a copy of your Python code into Mojo with minor changes. And to convince you, I'm gonna go back to our Python implementation copy the piece of code where we are computing the Mandelbrot uh, kernel per pixel computation. And let me align it so you can do a fair side-by-side -side comparison. Okay, so this loop and this loop are near identical. So for i in range to max iters, for k in range to max iters, if absolute value of the complex number is greater than two, greater than two break, otherwise iteratively compute c, um, iterate on NV and so on. So this Python implementation and this Mojo implementation near identical, right? But careful eyed viewers would have noticed a couple of differences. One is that the uh, arguments here are annotated with these uh, type annotations. So we are saying C is a complex float 64. Uh, if you like writing typed Python, you probably do this in Python code too. Uh, key difference here is Python interpreter doesn't really use that information for optimizing your code, whereas in Mojo, Mojo being a compiled language, uses this information to speed up your code. We also define the return type as int. Everything else is the same, right? So what we can do is uh, go ahead and run this piece of code. So I'm gonna start from top, execute, 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 copy this uh, name of this uh, function definition uh, and use it in this uh, nested loop where we actually compute the pixel values, okay? So the, this piece of code here in this cell uh, has nested loops for height and width where we compute each pixel. Uh, for, for each pixel, we compute the Mandelbrot kernel, the function that I um, defined right above that we just saw, and we time the computation, okay? So let's go and run this cell um, in this case, I'm gonna run it and uh, not not uh, pre-run it and show it to you because it's actually pretty fast. The computation in, in Mojo is much faster than our Python implementation. And some of the reasons being Mojo is just faster and also annotating some of those types help really speed up the computation in Mojo. So this takes about uh, 17 seconds compared to, compared to the 18 minutes with pure Python and three minutes in uh, NumPy. This takes 17 seconds in Mojo. That's a pretty good speed up if you ask me for nearly no code changes. But we're not done yet. Uh, we have another function if you here if you noticed. It's called Mandelbrot Mojo. The first one's called Mandelbrot Python to Mojo. This one is just called Mandelbrot Mojo. So there are a few other differences here compared to the previous function. Let's go through the key key differences. First, uh, these two type annotations remain the same, okay? Return type and the argument types. We also declare the variable z and var, uh, z and nv as var. Var is a variable that can change during your program. If a variable, uh, if you have a value that doesn't change, you can declare it with let, uh, which we don't have here. So we declare these as var. And we also replace absolute value of z with z dot squared norm. Absolute value of a complex number is is also its norm value. That is, 
uh, sum of square of the real part and the imaginary part and the square root of it. But we don't really need to take the square root. So we just use the squared value and we see if it's greater than four. And we also, uh, in the computation of uh, z is equal to z squared plus c, we have a single uh, optimized built-in function that does this. So z squared add. So this will do the whole um, uh, iterative algorithm here with this single function call. So it'll square and add c, right? So the benefit of using this built-in function is that the implementation itself is very optimized. It's vectorized, takes better advantage of available hardware resources. Uh, so those are all the changes. Oh, and the other changes, you notice that the function here is called def, which is what you use in Python. Mojo also has fn functions. And the key difference here is that fn functions are strict. They expect all your variables to be declared uh, with types, you need type annotation and return types defined. Um, just like how you would do in a statically typed language like C, right? Versus dynamically typed language like uh, Python. So Mojo gives you the option to do both type of programming. Um, and by doing this, you give more information to the Mojo compiler so it can better perform optimizations and speed up your code. Okay, so let's go ahead and run uh, this part of the code. And now this should be um, even faster in executing compared to the previous one. Let's see how much faster it's going to be. There it is. So uh, we see that this is about uh, 12 seconds compared to the 17 seconds we had previously. So to recap, uh, we went all the way from uh, 18 minutes in pure Python to three minutes in NumPy to 12 seconds when you just brought in your Python code just as it is and used it in Mojo with minor changes and by using more strict um, type annotation, declarations, return types, uh, you further speed it up and using built-ins, you further speed it up to uh, 12 seconds. That's pretty impressive if you ask me. Uh, for such less work you had to do to migrate your Python code into Mojo. So these are uh, all the changes that we discuss in the first part of this blog post. And uh, to show you sort of the quick speed up, um, uh, of course you can visualize the same results that you see uh, that we saw using the pure Python implementation. So you know that you're generating the same Mandelbrot um, um, set. So to show you, to close this uh, demo off, I want to show you the speed up. So the time it took to compute the pure Python implementation, I copied it here. Now I'm going to copy the time it took to compute the optimized Mojo uh, code, and I'm going to see what the speed up is. So this turns out the speed up is about 87 times. So from 18 minutes to 12 seconds is about 80 time, 87 times speed up, which not so coincidentally is roughly the same value we report in our uh, blog here, right? 89 times uh, speed up. Um, the variations depends on what hardware you use. We, we use a different hardware um, that's just in the blog post and I'm using a different hardware to run these examples. Nevertheless, you will see speed up when you run this. So that's the summary of the takeaways in this blog post. Uh, stay tuned for part two, where we'll show you how to get more speed up and perhaps more than 35,000 uh, speed up over Python. Uh, and we'll show you what optimizations you need to do to get there. Um, so that's the end of this video and this blog post. Uh, stay tuned, subscribe to our channel. We'll be doing additional videos on uh, walking through code walkthroughs for Mojo and optimizations and such. Uh, so I'll see you in the next video. Bye.